Welcome to Film in 5D, the show that shoots everything film with 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammack, and this week I show you my method to generate realistic gunfire in Adobe After Effects. I thought you just shoot real guns. I do, but I'm going to show them how to not shoot real guns. It's safer. Previously on Film in 5D. Who is that? Is, is that Aaron? Is he holding a body? If we give him enough information right now, he's gonna find out the truth. That could be a problem. But look, we know Aaron killed your friend Will. Well, I guess the security footage showed that. But I have reason to believe now that Aaron is working with somebody to plot against you. Uh, what makes you figure that? I don't know, just the feeling I guess. It's that damn con artist. I'm telling you, man, he's, he's poisoned you against me. Give it up, man. Just leave me alone. The story continues now. I don't think we can afford to wait much longer. It's only a matter of time before he finally flips out on me. That could be a problem. That's why I want to meet up with you guys. I know it's been a while, but I think it's time. It's a bit risky meeting here, though. Where's the target? Target? His name is Colton, and he's up north for the weekend. I don't give a crap about his name. All I know is he needs to be dealt with, and fast. He's my friend. He helped me start off the show. Look, all I'm saying is that if we can avoid a confrontation, I think we should. It may be too late for that. But it's not too late. He said it's too late. Look, Aaron, we both know that we can't afford to lose you. Is Colton really that important? I guess not, but... Then we need to focus on your protection. Who's the star of this show, anyways? I am. That's right. So if we need to take out Colton, or his little friend, that's what we're going to do. Understood? Okay, but... Give him the package. Package? What's this? Protection. Protection? From what? Colton was given a fake handgun a few weeks ago. Really? Why didn't you guys tell me? We want to know what his intentions were. To see if he was actually going to try and kill you. What if the gun was real? I mean, how could you possibly know that it was fake? I saw it through my scope. It looked exactly like one of those fake handguns they sell at the sports store. It had an orange tip and everything. Orange tip? Wait a second. You had a chance to take them out, but you didn't? It wasn't his purpose to do that, Aaron. Purpose? You're the main character of the story. Your character arc and development was supposed to be way more complex than either of ours. Aaron, you need to take care of them. There's nothing more that we can do. What's in the box? Well, since Colton was given his hardware, he decided to give you a fully automatic machine gun. Playtime. So this week, I want to talk about how to create realistic looking gunfire for your videos, since they seem to be very popular on YouTube. For this tutorial, I'll be using Video Copilot's Action Essentials 2, which is one of the more popular asset packs for explosions, gunfire, and pretty much anything you might find in an action film. Now a gunshot has several different attributes, which extends far beyond a muzzle flash, which if you look around on YouTube, many of the gun effects only include the muzzle flash, so today I'll be covering all the important effects that you should include with your gunshots. You'll need a smoke effect, a bullet shell discharge effect, and the muzzle flash itself, which will often vary with different perspectives. And the thing that is often overlooked about gun effects is sound, which goes well beyond the initial gunshot. I mean, you have the echo of the shot depending on the location, you have the bullet hitting the floor, and you have to take into account what surface your subject is standing on. Is it a marble floor or is it grass, which are very different sounds. But let's jump on over to After Effects while I'll show you my method to gunfire.
All right, so as you can see, we're taking a look at this footage right here, and it's just me practicing with my new gun. So uh, as you can see, there are several effects in here. Um, if you use Action Essentials, the muzzle flashes, or at least most of the muzzle flashes, actually come with smoke already. As you can see, there's a little bit of smoke in here, so you don't have to worry about adding you know, smoke. It kind of just lingers in there afterwards. And same for the other ones from behind. And as you can see, I also have the bullet discharge right here. And you know, it only Action Essentials actually only comes with two different types of bullets, but you know, it's pretty common that in a machine gun like this, you'll find you know an eight millimeter bullet like this one. And let me see. Yeah, and I have some debris effects as well, but I'm not going to cover that today. I just kind of added that in there to, you know, enhance the effect a little bit. And okay, so let's start from the beginning. And as you can see, you know, the bullets just charged. They look you know, a little too, you know, a little too vibrant, I guess. Um, you know, I could probably color correct to change this. But what I'm going to do is, since I, I'm keyframing, let me just look at one of the bullets. As you can see, I'm keyframing the position of the bullet as it moves up and out of the screen. And uh, I don't have motion blur turned on, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Turn on motion blur right there. Turn on for the whole project. And then we're going to take a look at it again. Let's see if we see a difference. And as you can see, it's you know much, it's much better. Let me turn it on for the other ones too. That's one of the first things you should definitely want to take a look at whenever you're keyframing something that's supposed to be moving really fast. Just add a little bit of a natural motion blur. As you can see, it looks much better. And um, I I didn't need to keyframe the actual muzzle flashes because they literally only last one frame. As you can see, this is one frame, and then the smoke kind of lingers. You can keyframe the smoke if it's if your gun's moving like crazy, but really you don't need to because the smoke wouldn't really move, so I can never keyframe it. Um, let me see what else. Okay, so for these shots, I obviously I masked out. I've covered this in previous episodes, but I'll just talk about it for a second. I masked out. Um, let me see. I masked out uh, the layer on top. I, I have two identical layers on top of each other with um, the effects in between. You saw this with when we blew up the car. We did two episodes on that basically. And so, and then I keyframed just you know as much as I needed to for the smoke to be in there. And I did it again for the second one. And that way you can get the, let me see, uh, what layer is this? Let um, me just solo this real quick. I remember how. So as you can see that, you know, this is a full-on frontal, you know, look at a muzzle flash. So you can use it for behind as well, obviously. And, and it cuts off some of it when you mask it, and so that's kind of what you want. Um, anything else I wanted to mention? Let me just watch it, watch it through real quick. I'm hitting zero to get a RAM preview. You can hear the sound too, if you want to, or spacebar just to not hear the sound. If you're using After Effects, which I think most of you are. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, the other things um, are the sound. You want to get the sound of the muzzle flap. You want to get the sound of the gun. You want to try to get you know as close as you can as the actual gun, and you want to make sure you know it's not just this hollow sounding gun. You know, you want to make sure. If you're, if you're outdoors, you want to use an outdoor sound effect. I actually don't have you know a whole library of sound effects yet. I want to purchase some eventually, but right now I'm just using the ones that came with Action Essentials. But um, yeah, you want to try to get as close as you can as the real effect, and that's really important. And, uh, and obviously the bullet hitting the ground. Right here I'm, I'm staying on concrete, so I'm going to try to give it like a little bit more of a thud versus you know the sharp ping of uh, the bullet hitting you know, a marble floor like it does in the sound effect. So I'm going to just try to give it a little bit more thud. And if it's on grass, obviously it's going to be muffled. You might not hear it. 
and things like that. But yeah, that's pretty much the basics. And that's it. And that's it for this week. Send your questions to me via at mentions on twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. If you have any specific questions about something that you've seen on the show, leave a comment below or send it to the Twitter page at Filmin 5 d Or if you're on Facebook, you can post it on our page at the link below. And we'll be back next week to talk about the different types of camera shots. You know, I'm kind of surprised. surprised. With all this talk about guns and stuff, you never talked about the two you got right there on set? Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> back before I was a filmmaker and threw all the rest of my life away. Uh-huh. Thanks, though. See you next week. It's over. Colton? Yeah. Ciao! Bam, bam, bam.